Today we're covering part 13 in the series that covers this sensational war diary written by a platoon leader from the motorized infantry division Das Reich named Kurt who led during the final assault on Moscow in the winter of 1941-42. In part 12, the division found itself under considerable pressure as the enemy counterattacked from the east and the west. In part 13, we'll see how the unit reacted to attacks by powerful tank formations while under continual artillery bombardment. These days confirmed that the Soviets were not an enemy to be taken lightly. If you like material produced with primary historical sources, please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Der 26. Juli 1941 Die Größe des russischen Einsatzes The scale of the Russian attack becomes clear on July 26th when word comes down from division that 54 Russian tanks have been destroyed so far. Most of these were taken out by individuals in man versus tank combat. Gradually, it's developed into an impressive hunting expedition with each soldier hoping to bag his own enemy tank. I think back on the motorcycle messenger who raced after a tank that had broken through our lines, mounted it, broke open the top hatch with a sidearm and threw in a hand grenade. He also managed to kill the Russian crew as it tried to escape. In spite of the incredible power of the Soviet artillery, which we've grown somewhat accustomed to, we've learned to sleep in our trenches during the barrages, even during the day. We've also managed to suffer relatively minor losses. Our positions are now so well built that even a rabbit's work pales in comparison. This is a good place for me to thank my Patreon supporters. Without their support, buying these originals to create the content wouldn't be possible. Patreon channel members get access to exclusive film footage that can't be shown here. As an example, in part 12 from this series, I showed a clip of some nice Waffen SS training footage that left the video unmonetized my Patreon members will have access to the complete first reel from that footage in a few days. Open a free account on my website, military1945.com, and take a look at some example footage. Come and see. This is the official war atlas for Operation Barbarossa. We're looking at the situational map for July 26, 1941, which gives us a great overview of the front for the day that Kurt describes the defensive battle that the motorized Waffen-SS Infantry Division Das Reich was engaged in. On this day, along with the 10th Panzer Division, which was operating just to their south, Das Reich was the farthest unit east on the entire Eastern Front, and it seems to have been performing well. Here we're looking at the entry from the official war diary of the German High Command for July 26th. Heeresgruppe Mitte Erneute Feindangriffe gegen Panzergruppe 2 und Smolensk. Der Kessel von Smolensk wurde im Osten geschlossen. If you are interested in seeing content related to the closing and reducing of this pocket, take a look at the different playlists which cover the 7th Panzer Division and the 20th Motorized Infantry Division. You'll find links to these at the end of this video. 
Kurt's entry for that day continues. My platoon specifically was unlucky on this day. Through a single direct hit, Sergeant Stepanek and mortar crew members Bischoff, Lamp, and Vikorek were all killed in action. This incident was all the more tragic because usually the men were divided, one man to a whole. Only in order to receive their morning rations had they gathered together, and at precisely that moment, the direct hit had landed. The explosion blew me off my feet and showered the area with clods of dirt, creating an immense dust cloud. Someone yelled, Medic! Sergeant Siegfried Weiher jumped into my foxhole. Distraught horror was etched into his face. He only managed to repeat the phrase, They're all dead. They're all dead, over and over. And now, let's see the next part of that training film. Der Schnitt eines Schützenlochs für stehende Schützen sieht so aus. Und vollkommen getarnt und verzogen so. Jedes Nest und jede Stellung ist in der Nacht weiter auszubauen. Zum Beispiel dieses SMG-Nest. Die Zeltbahn, bisher Schutz gegen Verschmutzung, wird entfernt. Ständig beobachtet ein Mann der Bedienung. Ein anderes Beispiel. Dieses Nest für mittleren Granatwerfer schützt gegen steiles wie rasantes Feuer. So genügt diese LIG-Stellung in keiner Weise. Bedienung und Geschütz sind gegen Splitterwirkung fast gar nicht gesichert. Solche Nachlässigkeit wirkt sich bei starkem feindlichem Feuer verhängnisvoll aus. Das ist die Folge eines falschen Verhaltens. <lacht> 